resume our session. And our next speaker is Thomas Studa uh, from the University of Bern, who speaks on the proof theory of model logic with fixed points, which is some sort of a main topic in Bern. Thank you very much. So we have already heard Daniel's talk, the first talk today, who talked on, well, algebraic and topological models of common knowledge. My talk is now concerned with the proof theory of common knowledge and other modal logics with fixed points. So that's uh, the plan. We will study various systems for um, common knowledge, also for the new calculus and study the proof theoretic properties. But I'd like to start with, with an example, how these fixed points work. So we're in the language of modal logic and a positive operator is a, is a, a formula where you have some uh, atomic proposition X that occurs only positively. And so semantically, this gives rise to a monotone operator, and therefore we have least and greatest fixed points. And in general, we denote the greatest fixed points, the greatest fixed point using this new x, a of x notation. The least fixed point would be new x, a of x. And fixed point means that we have this um, equivalence here. So in a way, we can, we can unfold the fixed point. So the fixed point is equivalent to a and the, for x, we plug in the fixed point. So when do we see such fixed points? Well, in, in temporal logic, we want to express that some proposition P always holds. And this can be ex expressed as a greatest fixed point. So P always holds um, is this fixed point here, namely we have the operator P and next x. So the circle is, is the next modality. And if you take the greatest fixed point of this, then we get the P all this holes. And so we can, we can look at this now using this, this unfolding, this um, procedure of always plugging in the fixed point. So if we plug in this fixed point for the X here, then we get this formula. So we have P and in the next state, the fixed point. Now we can do the same, we can unfold it again, we can plug in the fixed point for the x. Then we get p and in the next state p and in the next state the fixed point. We can do this again and again and again. And what we end up with is that p holds now in the next state, in two states, in three steps, in four steps, and so on. So we can we can do this unfolding arbitrarily often, and we get the P holes for arbitrary nestings of this next modality, which means it always holds. So this is basically how these fixed points work and where we see these fixed points. So the other example where fixed points arrive is common knowledge. Dania um, introduced this already, so I can be quick. Um, so basically, we can define common knowledge of a proposition A as a kind of infinitary conjunction, as everybody knows A, and everybody knows that everybody knows A, and everybody knows that everybody knows that everybody knows A, and so on. So like in the, in the always case, A holds now, and in one step, and in two steps, and in three steps. And here we have all these iterations of everybody knows that. And I mean, here I work with this very traditional notion of common knowledge and, and the semantics. I mean, I don't introduce the semantics, but I use just ordinary Kripke frames. Then this kind of infinitary conjunction is equivalent as defining common knowledge as the greatest fixed point of everybody knows A and everybody knows X. So we can, we can model common knowledge as this infinitary conjunction or as really greatest fixed point of this. And in the proof theory, we'll see both approaches. So um, the language I'm going to use is um, in negation normal form. So we have negation only for atomic propositions. Then we have disjunction, conjunction. 
you have box and diamond for every H and I. So it's a multimodal logic. And then for common knowledge, I use this symbol here, a box star. The star, of course, is like the star from regular expressions or from PDL, which gives us this or symbolizes this um, arbitrary iterations. And then we have the dual of common knowledge, which is the diamond star. I use some abbreviations. So box without the star means just everybody knows. So H1 knows A and H2 knows A and so on up to if we have H, H is H and A. And then diamond A is just a dual. And then we need these iterations. Everybody knows that everybody knows that. So we use this notation here, box to the N, which means the N time iterate, everybody knows. So this is our um, language, the formulas we use um, to um, obtain a sound complete Hilbert style system for common knowledge. Well, we have the usual system for modal logic here. I just use K as our basic um, logic as our underlying logic, because I'm mainly interested in, in the fixed point things and not so much in whether we have S4 or S5 or whatever. So we have K necessitation for all the agents. And then for common knowledge, we have one axiom and one rule. So the axiom is this here, the co-closure. So this is just one direction of this fixed point property. The other direction can be derived. So if you have um, common knowledge of A, well, then A is known, and everybody knows that A is common knowledge. So this is uh, one direction of the fixed point property. And then we have an induction rule saying that common knowledge really is the, the greatest fixed point. And this is the rule. So if we have a derivation of B implies box A, and box B, then we can infer B implies common knowledge of A. Now, how does this mean that common knowledge is the greatest fixed point? So the premise here has exactly the form of this co-closure axiom. But instead of common knowledge of A, we have, um, we have the B. And so this means if if B also satisfies this co-closure principle, then B implies common knowledge of A, or otherwise B is smaller than common knowledge. In that sense, common knowledge is the, the greatest fixed point. So this is one way to axiomatize this. Um, No, my slides don't work. I just quit. Try again. Sorry for this. A second, something is wrong. So I'll try again. Do you see the slides now? Yes, we see this. Yes, yes, we see. Okay, good. Good. So, this is one way to formalize common knowledge. The other possibility you saw already in Dan Yar's talk, namely using really this um, induction axiom, 
which basically says, well, we have the base case here, and we can, if it's common knowledge that we can add one box, or we can have one more iteration of everybody knows, then A is common knowledge. So if we, if we want to use this instead of this greatest fixed point rule, that's possible. That's another way to um, axiomatize common knowledge in a Hilbert star system. But I want to do proof theory, so I'm not too big a fan of these Hilbert style systems. So let's look at another possibility how we can get cut free systems for common knowledge. And Daniel already introduced the omega rules as the possibility to do this. And so this is what we use here. So the idea really is to um, model common knowledge as all these iterations of everybody knows. And this is what we do here. So we have an infinitary rule. So this says if for any iteration of everybody knows A, if we can derive all these iterations, then we can derive common knowledge of A. So we have infinitely many premises for all iterations of everybody knows, then we can infer common knowledge. For the dual of common knowledge, we have just um, from diamond A, we can infer the dual of common knowledge A. So this almost works, but we have to adapt the box rule. So if you forget about this um, dual of common knowledge in the box rule, then it's the usual box rule from modal logic. But here for the case of common knowledge with these two rules for common knowledge and it's dual, we need this um, additional side formula here that if we have the dual of common knowledge, we don't need to prefix it with a diamond. Usually all the side formulas are prefixed with a diamond in the box rule. But if you have the dual of common knowledge, then this additional diamond is not needed. So this gives us a sound and complete cut-free deductive system for common knowledge. Um, the problem is, I mean, the system is cut-free, but we don't have a syntactic cut elimination procedure for it. So we only have semantic cut elimination. We can prove completeness without the cut, but we don't have a, a cut elimination procedure. And here you see the problem that occurs when we want to apply the, the say, standard cut elimination procedure. And of course, it has to do with this um, dual of common knowledge in, in the box rule. So we have a cut on common knowledge of B and its dual. Here, common knowledge of B um, has been derived using the common knowledge rule. Here, however, it's just this side formula in a box rule. And now the usual procedure will be um, to permute the cut rule and the box rule because it's just a side formula here. And if we try this, well, then this almost works. We have box A, diamond, gamma, sigma. But here for the delta, we have this additional diamond, which um, we don't have in the original derivation. So the cut elimination procedure does not work because we have this, this addition in the box rule, which makes it uh, a bit problematic. So let's try some solutions. Well, one solution could be to really use dual rules. So here you see that the common knowledge rule and the dual of common knowledge rule, they don't really um, fit together because here we have arbitrary iterations and here we only have one time. So let's look at the rule where we have also time rule arbitrary iterations and then use just the usual box rule for modal logic. However, um, such a system is not complete. And in particular, we cannot derive the co-closure axiom, this axiom here. And it's instructive to see what goes wrong if we want to prove this. So we have here the co-closure axiom. Then um, 
I mean, on this side, we have the box A here, and this is, can easily be derived. On this side, we have to derive box of common knowledge of A here. So we use the dual of common knowledge rule here. We get some iteration of diamonds. Then we use the box rule, which means one of the diamonds is removed. Now we have common knowledge here. So we can apply the common knowledge rule, this infinitary rule, and we get all this omega many premises. And now the thing is, we have a fixed K here. This means only one of these premises essentially can be proved, namely when the K, K is equal to the I, then um, this is provable, but the other premises cannot be proved. So the problem here is that in a way we have to choose the, the K already here before we apply the common knowledge rule. What we should do is we should first do all this um, omega many branches and then on each branch choose a different K, maybe one that matches the number of boxes. And then we would have a system that is complete. And this is exactly what one can do if one uses deep inference or nested um, sequence. So there the idea is that rules can not only be applied to outermost connectives, but also at certain places inside formulas. So what we need here is um, we want to make the box rule a, a structural rule. So we need additional structure for our sequence and this we do using here the brackets with some index, which correspond in a way to box. You all know in sequence, the comma corresponds to this junction. And now we have this additional structure here, the brackets that will correspond to the box. And so it will become possible to apply rules behind boxes. And this is exactly what, what we need. Um, to solve our problem that we choose the, the in iteration K too early. So we have the usual system here for modal logic in the deep sequence formulation. Um, you see that box rule is really just replacing the brackets with box. The same way that comma is replaced with or or with this junction. And the uh, um, diamond rule is also, if you think about it, the natural thing to do. So this is the usual system for modal logic K using this nested sequence. And now for common knowledge, we have the infinitary rule as before. And for dual of common knowledge, we also have just the, the dual rule with some iteration. K. But the thing now is that this can be in arbitrary places inside such an S sequence. So for instance, we can apply a rule at this position of the D here, which means it's behind two boxes if you look at the, at the structure of the brackets. And now you see, well, these rules are really exact tools to each other. So cut elimination. Um, Easily works. So these um, are the technical results. So only cut delineation that that works nicely. So necessitation, weakening, contraction are all admissible in the systems. All the rules are invertible. So we have all the nice properties. So what we now get is the following. So we have the deep system here with cut. And we can do a standard cut elimination procedure to get a proof um, in the deep system without cut. But we get more, we get also an embedding from the shallow system into the deep system. So this is quite easy. But we also get the converse embedding from the deep system into the shallow system. 
So this is this is really the, the hard part of the proof here. This is this is a lot of work and very technical. But so we actually get syntactic cut elimination also for the shallow system by embedding it in the deep system, eliminate the cuts and embed it back. But as I said, this is really the, the hard part. We also get up and bounds on the proof depth because we can embed the Hilbert style system into the deep sequence system and eliminate the cuts. Good, so this is what's going on for common knowledge where we have one particular fixed point. So let's look at the more general example, which is the modal mu calculus, where we not only have one fixed point like common knowledge or in, in temporal logic, we always operate, but we have fixed points of arbitrary um, operators. I mean, arbitrary positive operators. As I said, A of X is a positive operator, the X occurs only positively, then we can look at the least fixed point and at the greatest fixed point of it. So in a Hilbert formalization, formalization this is uh, straightforward to get a, a sound and complete system. So again, we just have the closure principle for the least fixed points. And we have the induction rule saying that mu x a of x really is the least fixed point. So we just add this to the axioms of modal logic, the axioms and rules of modal logic, and we get a sound and complete deductive system for the new calculus. So the axiomatization is, is very straightforward. The proof, the completeness proof, however, is, is really, really difficult. It's very involved, very hard to understand what's going on. So that there's a, a huge um, leap here in, in, in complexity and in, 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 in what's going on compared to Common knowledge. So, how about our cut free systems? So, first, I, I want to look at the system with cut, but in a, in a sequence formulation. So, this is basically just a, the Hilbert formulation given in, in a sequence notation. So, we have a rule for closure here. And if you compare this with the closure axiom, you immediately see that, that this closure axiom is, is derived from this immediately. Just for gamma, you plug in the negation of this. And then we have the induction rule here. And again, this is just a, the usual induction rule saying mu x a of x is the least fixed point or the least um, that satisfies this clo closure property. And, and of course, we need cut in this system. So, can we also look at infinitary systems as we did before? And it turns out that this is possible. So, again, for the introducing the greatest fixed point, we just look at all the iterations, all the finitary iterations of this. So here we just start from top and then iterate the, the operator. And if we can derive this for all finite iterations, well, then we can derive the greatest fixed point. For the least fixed point, we just have this closure rule, which just this is unfolding. So this is, is uh, the same rule we had here, which just gives us this, this closure principle. So it's really just unfolding the fixed point. When you do proof search, you just plug in the fixed point in this way. You get this. So again, we can show that this is a sound, complete deductive system. It is cut free. But also here, the proof is, is much more complicated than for common knowledge. So one thing is that already soundness is not trivial because in this general form of the new calculus, it's not clear that actually here this omega rule is sound. It's not clear that finitely many iterations are enough because there are models that you really need to 
transfinite many iterations until you reach a fixed point. But luckily, the model new calculus has a finite model property, which means that this omega rule is sound because we will have finite counting models. But so already sound this needs some work. And then completeness also, I mean, we have kind of canonical model construction, but also there we really need deep results about the, the new calculus to show that, that the construction really works. So here it's, it's really a um, much more difficult situation than for common knowledge of temporal logics. So how about cut elimination? Again, can we go to a deep system and eliminate the cuts? So the system that one naturally the, um, comes up with is this here. So we have the omega rule as before, but now in this nested sequence formulation at an arbitrary place in the deep sequence. And we have the dual rule here. We have some approximation, and then we can derive the um, least fixed point. And you see, here, these rules are dual to each other, so cut the elimination will be very easy. Um, and it's true, cut the elimination is easy, but unfortunately, the system is not complete. It is only complete for the so-called new box fragment, semantically also called continuous fragment of the model new calculus. But this is the fragment of those formula where or those operators where the fixed point is reached after finitely many iterations. So the thing is for the omega rule here, we could show that um, this is fine, this is sound. But here in a way for this new rule, um, just having finitely many approximations in a way is, is not, not, not enough. So what you would need to devise a system like this, you would need some kind of ordinals from outside so you could have longer iterations, something like this. So and to, to give you a formula that's not derivable but valid, this is an example where we can prove that this is, is not derivable in this deep sequence system. And you see here we have um, a box inside a least fixed point operator. So this does not belong to this fragment. So the question is, is there some other way to get cut elimination for the new calculus? And there is, but we need another kind of infinitary system. So we need a second kind of infinitary rule, the so-called big omega rule or Buchholz rule. So what we need is an intermediate system that has two infinitary rules, the small omega rule as before. If the, we use this if the um, largest fixed point is preserved in the proof, and we use this other infinitary rule if the fixed point is later cut away. So and we can embed our system with cut, which we started with into this intermediate system, then we use cut elimination to get rid of the cuts in the system. We use a technique called collapsing to get rid of the omega rules. And the result then is a, a proof that only uses the small omega rule and that is cut free. Now, how does this work? Um, to get some control over which rule we need, we um, introduce this additional operating new prime for the fixed points that will be um, cut away later. And we say a formula is positive if no new prime occurs in it. So that, that means uh, it will not be applied to some, it will never be a cut. So our new infinitary rule is the following, is this big omega rule. Um, we can draw it like this. If we spell it out, it means the following. So if for every positive sequence delta, we have the following implication. If you have a cut-free proof in M 
small omega of delta mu x a, then we get a proof of delta gamma in the system now with big omega rule. So if we have this, these are all the premises of our rule, then we are allowed to infer gamma not mu x a. So here this infinitely many premises now are infinitely many derivations, which is shown here. And if we have all this infinitely many derivations, then we can infer this. And you see here, we have the prime. So using this rule, we only derive formulas that will be cut away later. And now we need a, um, some cheating because we want to do cut elimination. And to make cut elimination easy, we use this rule here, omega tilde, which just is this big omega rule with cut built in, you see here. So and because of this, cut elimination is, is straightforward. So it's, you just push the cut up and if it um, meets this omega rule, which is built in, it's absolute. So technically, this is a cut-free proof, but of course, we have this, this uh, rules here. Now, how do we get rid of these rules, of this uh, big omega rules? So that's a technique called collapsing. Let me just give a, a sketch of, of how this works. So again, it's by induction on the, on the, on the proof. And the interesting case is when the last rule is this big omega rule, of course. So we have this situation here. So um, our gamma that we derive is positive. So that means also gamma mu x a is positive because here we have this least fixed point. So we can use the induction hypothesis on this and we get um, a cut free proof without big omega rule of this premise. Moreover, um, we can also use the induction hypothesis to all these derivations here to these other premises of the big omega rule. So that means if for all positive delta, we have this assumption here, we can derive delta gamma, then by the induction hypothesis, we know, well, this also is cut free and without the big omega rule. And now it's easy, we just plug in here this for this. So basically we use this gamma from this side here as delta, and we have a derivation of gamma. And by the induction hypothesis, this is cut free and does not use the big omega rule. So this is the technique called collapsing that comes in. <laughs> like this, we get the syntactic cut elimination procedure now for the mu calculus. So we assume we have a derivation of gamma in our system with cut. We embed it into our system with the big omega rule. We can do cut elimination there, which is straightforward. And then we use collapsing to get rid of the big omega rules and we get a cut free proof using just the ordinary omega rule. So this is how we can do cut elimination. But also here you see the, the additional complexity. Now, um, this works fine, but again, um, we don't have this for the full model new calculus so far. So our result that we proved um, involves only one um, variable. So that means we cannot have interleaved fixed points at the moment. So we can have um, examples like, like this here, so this works. So it is um, more general than the, this deep sequence approach, but still we only have one, one variable. The, the problem really is the formulation of this, this Buchholz rule and 
to show that, that this is sound. This is very, very um, tricky to, to get this right. In the, if you look at the new calculus of arithmetic, there is one result by Townsend who also uses a similar technique and he actually has a formulation of this big omega rule for two variables. So also not for the general thing, but, but for two variables. Good. So this is what we can do with these infinitary systems. Now there is another way how one can um, come up with infinitary systems for these fixed point logics. So what one can do is, we have the unfolding for the dual of common knowledge as before. And now also for common knowledge, we just do the unfolding of the fixed point. So we don't have this induction rule, we just unfold the fixed points. That's all that we do. Now, if you do proof search, then of course, um, maybe the proof search does not end because you can always unfold and unfold and unfold again. And here this is actually good. So here we want to have proofs that are not well founded. But then we needed some kind of condition saying, well, which ones of these non well founded proofs are actually good proofs? And this is then a global condition that we add on this non well founded proof search trees. And we say, well, the finite branches, they have to end in axioms, of course. And every infinite branch contains a common knowledge thread. That means we have a common knowledge formula that is unfolded infinitely often. So if the proof is non well founded because of common knowledge, then it's a good proof and it's sound. However, what we do not allow are proofs that are non well founded because of this dual here. So this may happen only finitely many of them. So this is basically what this global condition says. Um, we have non well founded proofs and then we, we need to say which of these non well founded proofs are, are, are good ones. It's those where the reason for the non well foundedness is the common knowledge, but not the dual. So here is an example, you see the common knowledge thread in red. And you see that, I mean, we start here with this common knowledge of A and we do this proof search, we get some axioms here and here. And here we basically end up with the same thing we had here. It's just this additional not A, but this doesn't matter. So this means this part can be now um, just be iterated. Um, infinitely many often, and we get this non well founded uh, proof tree. But we have this common knowledge thread, so it's a good tree and it counts as a proof. So let me just quickly give you two slides. One is how does the completeness proof look like for this kind of proofs? So, what you can do is you can define a a proof search game for these kind of proofs. So of course this gives you some, some infinite trees and then you have this um, global condition here. But this game is such that um, player one wins if the formula is provable, if there is a proof. Player two wins, well, if there's no proof, which means there is a technically called something a disproof from which a counter model can be um, derived. And then we need to show that this game, this proof search game is determined that one of the players has a winning strategy. And now this has to do with this global condition. One can show that this condition is um, simple enough so that the proof search game actually is determined, which means one of the players has a, a winning strategy. So the this really comes into play here, this global condition that uh, the game is determined. Now, completeness proof is, is simple if, if you have all these things defined properly. Well, if you have a formula that's not provable, then the proof search tree cannot contain a proof, which means there's no winning strategy for player one. Since the game is determined, there is a winning strategy for player two, 
which means the proof search tree contains a this proof, which gives you a counter model for the formula. And the similar approach also works for the model new calculus, exactly the same idea, which is to unfold the fixed points. The global condition will be a bit more complicated that we need, uh, use because of the, of the interleaved fixed points that are possible there. But still, it is simple enough so that the game is determined and you get the completeness proof um, in, in a similar way. Good. So I come to the last slide. And Daniel started today's session. So I think he should also close it. So I, I stop with a result of him. And this is how you can do um, cut elimination now in this non well founded proofs. I mean, here these proofs are non well founded. So the, the usual cut elimination procedure just never stop pushing the cuts upwards. I mean, it doesn't end, right? So one thing you could do um, is you can use uh, usual fixed point theorems from analysis, like here the, the, from Banach, where you have some, some non-empty complete metric space with a contraction mapping. And then this mapping has a unique fixed point. Now, how does this give you cut elimination? Well, the idea is that we define a metric on our non well founded proofs. And then we define a proof transformation that eliminates one cut, and we show that this is a contraction mapping in this metric. And now we know from Banach that this mapping has a fixed point, which means, um, I mean, this fixed point is then a cut free proof. So this is it's a possibility to, to obtain cut elimination in this non well founded proofs. So, I mean, we don't have this for um, common knowledge now or for, for even the new calculus, but there are some logics where this works and this is, is very nice and a nice um, technique, which um, Daniel developed. Okay, that was my talk. Um, thank you very much for listening and sorry for the technical problems. Let's thank our speaker. So, questions, remarks, please, Danja Ankanov. Wait, 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 I should, you should unmute, you should unmute. Uh, yes, <laughs> uh, uh, Thomas, thank you for, for your talk, and I have maybe one responsible remark. Uh, uh, I recall that this big Amiga rule is somehow related with uh, the Dedekind McNeil completions uh, uh, of algebras on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, known uh, methods of algebraic cut eliminations are also, uh, as I understand it, go through these dedicated McNeil completions uh, of algebras. And my responsible uh, remark that I wonder whether this uh, technique with big and big rule and its elimination, uh, this cut elimination with this big and big rule can be somehow uh, explained algebraically uh, where this algebraic cut eliminations why did they keep my completions? Yeah, thank you very much. This is this is a very interesting question. I had also some discussions with Ide Venema about this, and, but we, we really don't know at the moment. I mean, it seems there is some connection, but we, we really, I don't know. So it would be good if you could solve this. <laughs> I mean, it, it would be very nice to connect all these things that that's really something that's open right now. And, and, but we don't know really. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, you concentrated, you concentrate on the full cut elimination. Now my question is, suppose you were more uh, modest and 
will be enough for you to have, uh, to eliminate only non-analytic cuts, like in this uh, standard system for S5, uh, the most standard one. Will it affect the system? Will it affect the, 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 uh, the difficulty of the proofs? Um. I think it, it it will be more or less the same, but I'm should have looked at it carefully. It's it's sometimes the the feeling is is, is wrong. Very good answer. <laughs> Very good answer. <laughs> so, other questions, remarks. Okay, then uh, we close the session and the second day of the conference in honor of Professor Rivkov and we meet tomorrow. So thank you for all speakers and thanks for the audience distributed on many, many places in the world. <laughs> okay. <laughs>